Hey there, good morning. Just getting everything set up here while people pop in. Good morning, Addison. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Addison. Okay. Hey, it's Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday morning. A new day. A new energy. A new everything. Yep. So I was sitting here and I was surfing through quotes and I was opening up books and I was like what the heck am I talking about God because I woke up and I was dreaming of I was just having this weird dream and I woke up going what the heck was that and I said my gratitude prayer and was just trying to get everything going here oh good morning Michael um so yeah and then it came to me I mean, yesterday I actually said that I was going to do this, so I have like a mini major amount of preparation, I guess you could say, which is more than what I normally have. But I really try to keep this very in the moment, not focused on, you know, and I'm not preparing for conscious coffee. I just kind of let it flow, see what comes out of my mouth type of thing. But yesterday I had, I had a conversation and I said, you know, I think we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And what it came down to was yesterday after conscious coffee, I did my normal, 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 normal morning routine. See, I haven't had enough coffee this morning. I'll be able to talk here in just a second. So I did my normal morning routine. And you know, I did, did conscious, conscious coffee with you, ran my kids to school, came back, wrote in my journal, did a couple other little things and then I took off and I went for my five mile walk that I do every day from during the week, Monday through Friday. I try to walk five miles a day and I always take about 15 minutes and do um, yoga during my walk. And I'm listening to upbeat, positive, motivational speaking while I'm, while I'm walking and doing my yoga. So it's very, you know, multitasking, getting everything done, but still, but it was interesting. I should, I should preface this with, I'm born under the sign of Virgo. Not that I think that really overly matters, but there is a little bit of interesting stuff that happens there. I am very analytical. I'm very critical, very, very, very critical to myself. And I look at certain things as failure for myself where I'm completely compassionate and easygoing with other people on. But for me, I'm just like, no, that's not acceptable. So with that, and I'm telling you that for a reason here, with that, I, I take off, I put on my, you know, put on my walking shoes, sweatshirt, and I head out the door, and I go in and put in my music, and well, it's like some music on the front side, and then it goes into this talk. I'm listening to this talk, and it was from Gabrielle Bernstein, and I love her, love her to death, but I'm listening to her, and, you know, I'm like, yes, 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 to her whole motivational speech and everything. I'm just like loving it. I'm walking in and she in there she has <laughs> she has um you know different meditations that was so I ended up doing while while I'm walking, I got really caught up in that and I'm listening to her and then she says, We're gonna do this this breathing and we're gonna do this meditation. So I find a spot, I sit down, I do the breathing, I do the meditation, and then I walk some more. And I was just thinking like, oh, I should go do some yoga. But I have a spot that I do my yoga. So I could walk a little bit more of a distance to do that. But before I got there, she says, you know, oh no, we're gonna do this other meditation. So I go ahead and I do this other meditation. And like each one of these meditations were not just a couple seconds long, they, they were quite a length of time. So I ended up doing two meditations, two different kinds of breath work, a lot of you know internal focus and clearing work 
felt really good at peace. And I went and I managed to get in, in my yoga as well. Oh, sorry. But, so, you know, I ended up doing two meditations, a bunch of, bunch of breath work, did my yoga, but I only got like three miles walked. So, I'm walking along and quite literally, you know, I just came on and I just did all this, right, within my hour or in 15 minutes, what it was, my normal time for when I'm out walking. But on my way home, I'm, I, I like get up from there and I'm listening to my, my thread of music that I always play for walking home, which is Bob Duck and all about, you know, faith and, and just, it's just it's good, good walking music and just keeps you in that group. I'm listening to that and my ego kicks in and my ego just goes, oh my goodness, you suck, you failed, you, you know, you didn't get your five miles and you only did three miles. You're that's almost, you know, that's really, really bad. That's not, you're not gonna get your succeed with your goals walking just three miles a day and you need to do this and you need to do that. And basically it was like failure talk was beating the shit out of myself all because I had not done my five miles instead I only did my three miles and that's where my focus was was on the failure of not making it to the five miles and I was just like oh. and I, I took me probably you know another six seven minutes of hearing all this chitter chatter bullshit going on in my head about beating myself up and I was just noticing that, you know, I was feeling, ugh, like, ugh. Because I was just, here I had just gotten done with this incredible motivational talk. I had done two incredible, you know, meditations in that time frame. Got a whole bunch of breath work done, which really energized and also took a lot of stress away. And, and did my yoga too. And got three miles in. That's success, right? I think that that, I mean, looking at it today, looking back, I can say, no, I have had a really successful, a really successful walk. So I didn't get my five miles and I did all this stuff and it was beneficial. It was exactly what I needed in that moment. But coming out of that moment, I focused in on the failure, the failure of the five miles and only having three miles. So I guess my point in telling you these goofy little story about my failure that wasn't really failure. It's just that. Sometimes what feels like failure is really not failure. It is it is us moving towards, you know, what we what we need and being provided with exactly what we need for the moments and really just creating the us that we need in that moment so that we can move forward move forward, move forward. But how are we looking at what we're doing? How are we looking at what we're experiencing? Are we focused in on the five miles and the lack of hitting our five mile goal? Or are we focused in on the big picture of what we really truly received in that moment? You know, I think anytime you feel like you're failing or shit is happening or things are, are going on. Good morning, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of important to ask, you know, God, what do you want me to have? What, what do you want me to learn in this moment? What, what is my lesson in this moment? What is my the message that I'm supposed to receive? And we tend to forget to do that. I mean, while I was walking back to the house, which isn't this two songs distance to where I, to my house from where I walk my five miles. But while I was walking back and I spent literally the first song in ego, then I hit the second song and this starts to go, this is goofy. This is goofy. So it took me about four minutes to like detach myself from ego's nasty grip and and I started to look at things differently and what my thought was that got me out of it was what am I supposed to learn 
what am I supposed to want? Lord, what are you ha what are you wanting me to get from this right here? So it came down to actually a couple things I want to share with you. It did it came down to number one, me having the realization of asking the question to stop the ego, mm -hmm. to take it into a different view and start to mm -hmm. be able to come at it from a higher energy level instead of beating the shit out of myself for this failure and yeah small failure but guess what most failures are small they start out really small and we make these mountains out of them okay so it took me like four minutes to wow. have that question pop into my head and i coached myself on it. oh yeah that's right i need to ask myself these things i need to ask myself is that true I need to ask myself, you know, is, is that really, do I really believe that? Do I really believe mm -hmm. that I failed? Is that true that I failed? Lord, what is my lesson from this? Mm -hmm. What is my lesson from this? So those are the three things I ended up asking myself. Yeah. And then what I came to with that was a whole bunch on compassion because I was not being very compassionate to myself. And much like I started this with of you know like I can be I can be understanding towards other people like oh yeah so you didn't you didn't get that done that's okay that's not a big deal we'll do it next time and I'm like there's there's understanding there's compassion there'll be empathy there then when it comes to self it's still a work in progress it is it's a work in progress so to have compassion for self to just go Okay, so you're having just a human moment right now and what may appear like you falling down does not necessarily mean that you fell down. It might mean that, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just, I'm looking at it a different way, right? I need to get to this perspective instead of be sitting right here, just staring at that failure. Because here's the thing. If we become more compassionate, more understanding, more empathetic with self, then we can move through things, providing ourselves love and forgiveness for this horrible thing called being human. Mm -hmm. This horrible thing called, you know, not being always able to get everything in perfect alignment and keep it in perfect alignment 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I really ultimately share this because I know that a lot of people think, I, I get told all the time, oh, so nice to see that you're having problems too because you're doing this, you're doing that. It's, you know, like I, everybody knows you got seven kids, you got this going on, you got that going on, you're putting out this course, you're, you know, redoing this, you're doing that, but because I'm, I'm all over the place. And I know that I get that perception of that I got everything together all the time. And this is just a small thing. But for me, small things are big things. Like I will beat myself up over the smallest of things. And just to, to let you guys know that, you know, like, hey, it's perfectly normal. We all do it. We all fall out of alignment all the time. I'm always falling out of alignment. Always. I fall out of alignment probably 50 times a day. Seriously, like I am constantly falling out of alignment. The thing that I have learned about when I fall out of alignment is to recognize it as quickly as possible. So become conscious to it as quickly as possible. Because when you're falling out of alignment, sometimes you don't notice for days, weeks, months, years. So you don't want the years don't want the months, you don't want the weeks, typically. A couple days is one thing. You can have a couple bad days. But, you know, oh. literally, like I had I spent a whole a whole hour, 15 minutes or whatever it was doing this walk, feeling very in alignment. And then I spent, you know, a total of maybe seven minutes afterwards out of alignment. And here's the thing, I didn't fully get that my my message in that seven minutes so what ended up happening was I spent the rest of the day in a really pissy mood and I was like last night I went to bed and I was brushing my teeth and I looked in the mirror and I just took a deep breath and I was like 
One of my gratitudes at this moment is I am grateful that this day is over. I am grateful that this day is over because, and, and my next words was because I'm sick and tired of being a bitch today. I'm sick and tired of being a bitch today. I, I realized how bitchy I was in so many different things. I realized how exhausted and drained I felt and that it was all me who had done it. Nobody exhausted me or drained me. That was me doing it to myself because I was so caught up on my failure. I still was caught up on my failure. Kind of like it, it came all day long. I had let go of that initial impact and I had worked through it, but then something else came up and I was just like, Phew. So quickly to throw in the towel yesterday, I was like, that's it, I'm done, I'm done, fuck it, just fuck it. <laughs> like there was a couple times I had stuff to do and something happened and I'm just like, that's it. And I slammed my computer down and I was just like, we close the lid and I'm like, that's it, I'm done, I'm done. And then I would step away and I'm like, oh my God, you know, what am I doing? And here's the thing, everything that I'm telling you here is like, this is, it, it feels like failure. Okay, it feels like failure. This morning I sit here telling you that yesterday was yesterday. Yesterday was yesterday. It felt like failure while I was in it. It felt like I was completely out of alignment while I was in it. It felt like nothing was moving forward. Do you want to know the other side of yesterday? The other side of yesterday was that I had some beautiful experiences. I was I was given some incredible blessing. I had some incredible testimonies come in yesterday, like support from people that I had not asked from for support from, but they felt the need to write me some beautiful emails telling me about how they went to my new website and they love how I've put everything together and that I'm blending spirit and abundance and sex and how I went about doing it and the authentic raw approach that I'm still taking and all this different stuff like that and I, I ended up having somebody text me a beautiful testimony and support so it's like I got all these support messages all day yesterday I got you know I, I got potentially two new clients yesterday I had a bunch of stuff that just like came through came through and my only failure in yesterday truly was missing the blessing and I, I didn't miss it. I was like, oh, that's great. Woo, right? But I gave the blessing about this much energy. And I gave my failure about this much energy. Okay? So pay attention to where you're putting your energy. Right? I'm coming back into like, oh my gosh. Like, woo, look at all the stuff. Yesterday, I was in the middle of it. It was nasty. It took a lot to get out of it. And I had moments of getting out of it, moments of breathing in the, oh, okay, it's okay. What am I supposed to be getting out of this? What's my lesson? Breathe, breathe, breathe. Is that true? No, that's not true. But ego had me. Ego had me. It's nasty grips in me consistently. So it kept coming out back and attacking and attacking and attacking. So my day yesterday was from my viewpoint, full of suffering. There was a lot of like moments that just were really uncomfortable, really painful. Not that I want to, I look to the point that while brushing my teeth, I'm like, I am grateful that this day is over. I am grateful so much that this day is over. I'm sick and tired of being a bitch. I recognize that it was my comment about I'm sick and tired of being a bitch was a noticing of, of what was going on inside. It was my, my inability to open up, my inability to receive, my inability to surrender, my inability to get in alignment, my inability to say, fuck yes, that's amazing, and focus on what I need to be focusing on and leaning into that instead of doing what I, I would do that like a half a second then I'd move over here and I would just like whoo, go down this path and really focus in on that so it was I was in a nasty internal battle all day long all day long 
So look at, here's the, here's the list of conscious coffees. Yeah. Look at, good morning, Kim. Um, where are you focusing in on the failure more than the blessing? What blessings are you missing because you're focusing in on the failure? What are, what, how can you get into alignment? Because it's all about getting into alignment the quickest possible, but you know, and, and hanging out in alignment more. So I should have talked because this talk's going to be a little bit shorter this morning because I have a kid that has to be at school really early today. So my next point here that I want to make for sure, because this kind of comes with, I hope I got you guys thinking about where you're not in alignment and seeing that the little things can really throw you off and that in the midst of what I was perceiving as failure, which we all have these moments that we perceive them as failure, where are we actually having success? Because we're missing that blessing because we're focused on the failure, right? But the other thing, the other thing that you really need to look at here in the world of being more compassionate with self, understanding that, you know, you're moving forward is that a lot of these things that we count as failure or that we look at as success, and here's the thing, we might look at this as success. You might be doing a lot of the right things. You might be taking a lot of the right action. And this is what I mean. Let's take the person. Um, sorry, not sorry, if I'm hitting you on the head here. Okay. Um, I'm going to use conscious coffee. I'm going to use like a day. Let's say, let's say this is the person here. Okay. You get up, you listen to conscious coffee, you say your gratitude prayer. You, you journal some, you have some breakfast, drink your coffee, whatever. Make sure that you drink, you know, maybe you have this routine of drinking warm water in the morning with lemon because that's what's really healthy for your body. You take a walk, you go to yoga class, you go to the gym, whatever. You do these kinds of things. So you go do the physical activity. You listen to, you know, pump up music. You listen to an audio book, whatever that may be. You come back, you do this other stuff. So you see, you have all this, like, you have your routine, right? I have a routine too. So this is me some mornings. I'm actually on the head here for myself. But you're doing all of this as though it is a checklist. You know, like, here's my checklist from yesterday. Guess what? Conscious coffee's not on here. Walking is not on here. Meditating's not on here. Breath work's not on here. Writing in my journal, it's not on here. This is says to follow up emails, make sure to send out the invoice to so-and-so, you know, switch this on your website, blah, blah, blah. Are you, what is the energy behind those beautiful acts of consciousness creation that you're doing? Are they just part of your to-do list? So you can go check, check, check. Or are they something that is pulling you and being led by this internal, like, no, this is, I'm doing it because it makes me feel a certain way. I can't not do this anymore. It puts me into the flow. So really look at the things that you're doing because a lot of the times we do all the right actions with all the wrong consciousness. And if we're doing all the right actions with all the wrong consciousness, we're still out of alignment. Doesn't matter what the action is. Does not matter what the action is. If you are meditating to take it off your checklist, then don't fucking meditate. If you are writing in your journal to take it off your to-do list, stop writing in your journal right now until you can come back to that puppy and get it into like, this is my alignment. Now, granted, I'm going to tell you to write in your journal no matter what. But my point here is, is that really examine the consciousness behind every single act that you're doing. Because if you're not in the right consciousness for it, then it's not going to have the same effect. Now, if you're trying to create, you, you suck at journaling. I'm going to pick on journaling because I 
told you not to journal, but never stop journaling, okay? Don't stop your practices. Just become aware of the consciousness behind the practice. If you are trying to create a habit and you know that you desperately need to get healthy and walk, you desperately know that you need to drink more water, you desperately know that you need to write and you know have your trash can journal or have your motivational journal or your your you know creation journal whatever those are then you're gonna have to build that habit so on the front side yes it's gonna be that you know you need to keep it on a checklist to build that habit once the habit is there why are you doing it what is the consciousness behind it? Why are you doing it? Really, truly ask yourself that. Why are you so focused on it? Is it because it, it really comes to, oh, am I just trying to do this so that I look like I'm doing all the right actions? Or am I doing it because it's a calling from inside? Why are you doing it? Okay. And Kim, you message me. Kim's just bought a journal, so yay, Kim. Um, message me uh, with in the on the messages here on Facebook, and I can give you some some pointers on what to do with your journal and what to write in it. Okay, I think you brought up a great topic. Maybe I'll do a Facebook Live training on that later today or something. But definitely pop me a message so that I have that in as a memory. Uh, you know, the link there, and I'll make sure to I, I get you some stuff on that too because it is really, really important. Journal journal work is one of the most important things that you can do. So, but here's the thing, and here's the thing that you can start with on journaling. So I'll just I'll give a journal exercise. Um, notice over the last three days, notice over the last three days what some of the things where your ego has gotten some of the things where you've stepped out of alignment, where you feel like you're a failure, where you feel like you fell down, where you're like, oh man. So then I want you to go into your journal. I want you to start writing down, you know, why do I feel like a failure? What about this as a failure? What is my lesson from that? Is that true? Okay. So number one, what is, why do I feel like a failure? What makes me a failure in that? Either way you could write that. Then ask yourself, is that true? Is that true? Write down your answer, yes, no. If you come up with a yes, I want you to ask yourself one more question. I want you to ask yourself, am I certain? Okay. Now you should have a no there. Okay. But maybe you have a yes. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Just write down your answer. And then I want you to ask yourself, what is my lesson from feeling this failure? Okay. What is my lesson from feeling this? And then I want you to look at, and I want you to find in everything that you feel like you're feeling in, I want you to find at least two positive things, two things that you could go, okay, well, I didn't do this. I didn't succeed here. However, I did experience this. I did open me up to that. I actually got introduced to this person. I actually got introduced to this book. I actually got, you know, Whatever, find two positives in each one of those. I actually was given a time to just relax, which I have not given myself the opportunity to relax. In case it's more action-based and we just didn't get something done, what were you given, okay? And then I want you really to focus in on the gift, and I want you to start to look at those other places. So now, what is that gift, that blessing in that moment? What is it trying to actually say to you? What are the noticings around the blessings? And then from that, you can really start to kind of process and, and look at different things, okay? So then in the next question that I would say in there that I would have you write, and this would be the last one on failure is, if somebody else had gone through, if this was my sister, if this was my best friend, if this was my child, whatever, okay? Somebody that you deeply care for, and they, and they experienced this failure, what would I tell them? Okay, what would I tell them? So start there, ask those, because 
writing it out, handwriting it, and the benefit of handwriting that kind of stuff in the so you're going to process it differently. It's going to open up your circuits more, and you're going to actually be able to push through the blockages a hell of a lot quicker. Okay? So, I don't know all my kids going, so I've got to run them to school. Um, but I want you guys to really focus in on what are the things that you're, where are you focusing in on the failure instead of the blessing? What is the message from that failure that you're, that's probably not a failure, okay? And thanks to Kim, I will do something on, on journaling here because it really is important. I know you guys know who follow me all the time. I'm big time on, on journals. So, um, okay. I love you guys. If you find it in your heart to share this, I really do appreciate it. Please catch me at 1215 today. I'm doing another live. It's going to be about an hour long and I will be on the union show today at 1215 with three other people. We are talking about commitment through connection and it is going to be a very, very powerful talk. It's all dealing with the masculine and the feminine relationships, commitment and relationships, connection, how to really commit to that connection and how to connect through commitment. So it's going to have a whole bunch of different topics going on. Can't wait to do that, but that is at 1215 Central Standard Time. I will be putting a couple links throughout the day on my page as well. It will be recorded, so if for some reason you can't break away for the live, it will be recorded. It's going to be available. I'll be sharing it throughout the week as well. So, but as far as conscious coffee, please make sure to go ahead and share this conscious coffee on your wall. Thank you everybody who shared your comments, who viewed it today and watched, and I wish you a successful day because every day is actually a success. Okay. I love you guys. I'll catch you tomorrow at 6.30.